Okay guys, it's Saturday, February 11th, and um, show you what I've been up to. We're still on the Torino. Last video I showed you the fuel system we set up, and all the fuel lines are good. Um, as I told you, we put a stock tank in it. Which is right here. And I got my Torino rubber mat, which I ordered, which is okay. I was expecting it to be better for what it costs, but, but it just covers up that new tank. I, like I said, I wasn't going to paint that tank. And the other things we have done, I did mention I put a new heater core in it. I don't have my hoses on yet. I started this up last night. I don't know if you can see it in the daylight. I got all my dash. No, you can't. No, I had the battery turned off. That's one reason you can't. The battery switch at the back that is. But I got all my uh, dash lights working. I want to show you what I went through on that. I ended up buying a different instrument cluster, which I just showed you in the car. It actually has close to the actual miles this car has on it. But this car really has about 169,000. Uh, restored it at 160 something, I think. But anyways, you can see I've got several instrument clusters here. One of them is the original, which is this one right here. And when I restored the car, I shouldn't have done it, but I rolled the odometer back. And I'm glad that the odometer that I have in it now is a, pretty close to what the car should have on it. As you can see, I have a cooked circuit map there. That's why I got that. But the uh, instrument cluster that I put in it supposedly came from a very rusty but low mileage Torino convertible and um, fuel gauge is working and that's part of what this video is about we're having an issue with our sending unit but the fuel gauge is working um, I have not been able to test the speedo yet I did a little bit before I was able to actually run the fuel pump started up with the fuel that's in the bow of the carburetor and um, I think I got that straightened up but I'm not going to put my dash cover on until I know for sure. My Speedo cable, I bought a new one. Uh, it had a different end on it than what this originally has on the transmissions. So I got lucky and found out that my original one wasn't actually broke. But the end that goes in the transmission had just pulled out. And it kind of crimps into a piece and I fixed that. So that's working. But anyway, we've got all our dash lights working now, which is a good thing. Now the issue we're having, I've already had two sending units in this car, and I really want my fuel gauge to work accurately. The first one I tried last weekend, this cheap piece of junk right here, it only cost me $29, but it's still, it's really wrong to sell a brand new item that doesn't work. And I bought this a long time ago, so returning it most likely is not an option. Um, but uh, when I put it in, when it read em when when the tank was completely empty, it would read over a quarter tank, and um, and I played around with calibrating it, and the more I fooled with it, it got to where it just didn't work at all. And I bought another one, which is a more expensive one from a company I believe I believe I ordered it from Dearborn Classics, and it works accurately, but it leaks. Luckily, it's not leaking around the seal, but it's leaking at the actual electrical outlet for the sending unit, which is which gives the signal to the gauge, which is kind of dangerous, I guess. But um, I got and I tried tightening up that nut because there's a rubber seal under it. It slowed it down, and I did this last night, and it's still leaking slowly. But any leak is unacceptable. So. I'm going to take this back out and see what we can do. First thing i got to do is drain some fuel from the tank, though. Not looking forward to that. I was hoping to get this thing on the ground and running today, which we may still do it. Actually, I was hoping to do it last night. So let's get the fuel out of this tank first. Okay, if you don't want to get under the car and use a drain plug, which I decided I don't want to do, uh, just because I got my drain plug good and sealed and I had to use some sealer on it, you can use an electric fuel pump. This was given to me. I think it's supposed to fit a diesel. And I just got a hose run in there. And it's hooked to the battery. I need to buy some alligator clips to make it easier. But it's a quick way to drain the gas. And doesn't really make as much mess. You don't get it splashed all over the place when it comes out of the drain plug. I'm kind of thinking I wasted my time putting a drain plug in it. 
it. It's coming out. So we'll get that drain and then we'll take the sending unit off and see what happens. Okay, we got the sending unit out. As you can see, this one has a good steel float too, which is about to, which is not in there very good. I'm gonna have to tighten that up. I'll just have to take that off and yeah, maybe it'll stay. Really, I need to take that off and squeeze that together a little more where it holds it. I might go ahead and pop that off for now. There it goes. But here's the problem with the leak. If you can see that, that seal was squeezed out of there. Uh, I wish I'd inspected that before I put it in, but who would have thought that it was going to leak? It's brand new. Shouldn't. It should have been already tight enough. See, I tried tightening it, and I was concerned. And the whole screw started turning, and I was concerned about that it was going to wrap it around this and break my wire. Which actually, it would just loosen it. This is a bit on the tight side now. But we got to get this off and. See if we can Okay we go at least we're taking the stress off of that. Let's see if we can get a figure out why the seal, the screwdriver is a piece of junk. I need to take back the screws in place. Let's see what else I got. If that one will take a bite or not. It's too small, really. Yes, it is too small, but we did get it. Mm, hang on, I need to get a better screwdriver. Let's see if this screwdriver fits better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the seal on this other side goes under the washer. I think it's okay. I can't believe that thing squeezed out like that. Shouldn't really have to tighten it that tight. But like I said, I didn't even tighten it or think to look at it. Because like I said, it's a brand new sending unit. And here's what we have there. Yeah, that's... Got to be a better way to do that. I don't know if I could reuse that seal and get it to seat better or not. It's almost like I need a smaller one. Now this one. Let's see if you can see it. Yeah, this one has a little step on it. It fits in the groove. Really, it should it should have two of them like that instead of that stupid O-ring underneath of this. It's not a good idea. Plastic washer goes on top of it. We'll just keep that in order it came out of. And I don't know if I can reuse this or not. I'm tempted to look for something else. I have some. Uh, I don't know if they're the right size, but I have a bunch of them. You know, we may tighten this and see what it does. But boy, there's no way of knowing. until I put some gas back in it and if it still leaks got to drain it again so yeah like I said it may, this may if it takes more than one try that means you have to I'm thinking that maybe I'm hoping that that step on this plastic spacer, sp spacer, spacer wasn't uh, in the step and maybe it was crooked. We'll see what it looks like when I tighten it down again. <clears throat> Let's see, I need a socket. I should have one down here. I don't know if an 8 millimeter will fit it or not. Yes, it will. Probably not supposed to be 8 millimeter, but I don't care. As long as it fits. I want this car on the ground where I can drive it again and move on to other projects. I got a chainsaw to put back together. I haven't even ordered parts for it yet. And after that, I want to get back on the truck. I'm motivated to do stuff. 
it seems like everything I do takes 10 times as long as I think because of little silly things like this going wrong. Let me just see what this seal looks like when I tighten it up. Can't really see through my arm. Yeah, you can see what I'm doing, kind of. Yeah, I'm just going to put a little pressure on this plastic bushing with the screwdriver and I try to turn. I don't know about that. It just kind of squeezes it. No, it's not going to work. Good job, guys. I mean, you would think that if. Uh, company mass produces something it would work which this like I said this one reads accurately and I like that because I wasted so much try time trying to get the cheap one to work only to end up having it not work at all yeah, this one seemed to be very accurate hopefully it still is and I just dropped the rubber seal but I'm watching it roll around and around and hopefully I won't lose it okay we need to find something better. That's just, just a super soft seal. And it just squeezes right out of there. It's a very bad idea. I'm almost tempted to put some kind of fuel tank epoxy on that. Seal it up. Hang on, I'm going to see what kind of seals I have. Okay, it just so happens I have a whole bag of these guys right here. Now I bought these. Remember back when I um, put the new seals in the uh, fuel lines on the 94 Power Stroke? The project I never finished, but I did get those fuel lines in. Oh, great. There you go, Mark. Just drop everything. But um, these seals fit that, and I bought the whole bag right here because you couldn't find them anywhere. <clears throat> and it just so happens that they are a good tight fit and they're they're not as soft they're stiffer uh, it's worth a try because I'm pretty sure that rubber seal that originally came with this city unit is just not going to work even if I can't I, I just don't think I can tighten it down enough without it squeezing out the side okay let's see what happens with this we're gonna stick this seal On this. Okay, now I got this little plastic bushing goes on top. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm not sure which way this is supposed to go. This little steel washer. It's got a flange on it, and I'm not sure if I get it on right or not. I'm not even sure if it will matter. But let's see if this thing will seat down on there without it's a lot it's a stiffer washer too the the rubber or o-ring rather I should have said okay at least it's going on straight I think it's I hope that's gonna work better hopefully I got this one it looks like it's kind of off center Because there is a little flange on the rubber washer on this opposite side that you kind of can't see. Which, not kind of, you can't see it. Because it's over here. But, I think I got it centered up. Yeah. Looks like it's uh, staying straight. That's what I like. Get good and tight. Hopefully not too tight. It's still kind of kind of crooked but at least the seal isn't squeezing out I need another I wish, wish they had two flange washers on this thing that would be the right way to do it I don't know where I could find one like that kind of makes me wonder if Somebody didn't open up the package on this thing and lose that and stick that in there or stole it. 
for one that because they needed that washer and just put this o-ring in there and no one would be the wiser until they put it on okay that's looking kind of straight Well, one thing I can do now, it looks straighter. It's pressed on there pretty tight. Um, much to hate to, I'm going to stick it back in and put fuel in it before I know. And let's see if I can tighten this up. The float's kind of loose on there. I don't guess it can go nowhere. I may be messing up here. I hope I don't. And let's see, did I? I hope this is the right way to put that on. Can't remember. I may have to go back and watch the video. Okay, I don't know how good this is going to look. It looks awful dark on the screen, even though I have plenty of light. For my eyes, as bad as they are. Okay, first thing I want to do, we get an O-ring. It fits in this slot here. I'm going to rub a little grease on it so that it will stay in place. That can be a pain in the butt when it falls out of place. You can think you have it right, get it all together, put fuel in it, and it'll leak. And I'm really hoping that what I did seals everything up. I'm feeling kind of good about it. It looked good and straight. That is a better quality seal than what they gave me with that sending unit, that's for sure. I don't know if I got enough grease in there or not. I don't want too much. This stuff is pretty sticky, so all, all I want is for it to uh, keep this in place. And I gotta try to be careful not to hit it. I wanna maneuver this thing in. Now, we gotta spin it this way, get that float in there, that goes in there, and now it's supposed to go like this. And I got two tabs, one here and one here, they fit in these slots, if you can see them. Okay, I gotta spin it back around, there we go. And I gotta make sure the slots Kind of acts like it don't want to fit, but I went through this last night. It's just a matter of getting it. There we go, everything in the right position. Now, like this little clamp here kind of fits in the, underneath those notches of the tank and it kind of wedges it in there tight. And instead of hitting it with a screwdriver, because there is still some fuel in the bottom of this tank. I don't want to make sparks. Use this. What this does. Well, guess what? I think I. Yeah, that's not underneath of the uh, piece there. Or is it? I'm looking at the wrong thing here. Ah, okay, I see what's going on. Yeah. There we go. Angel, stop it! My dog barks at everybody. Drives me nuts. I'm afraid what I really worry about is my neighbors in the behind my property in that subdivision who are not really very sociable. I guess they think since uh, this used to be farmland here and I'm, I was here before all that was built, I'm some kind of a, I don't know, hillbilly or something that they don't want to talk to or something. They, they don't, they don't want to talk to me. I don't talk to anybody that's nice to me, but these people are just, I don't know, they're weird about being sociable. 
sometimes I want to move out of this county. I like the home that I had. Yes, I am surrounded by property, but um, there are more rural areas with more friendly people in Kentucky than good old Jefferson County or Metro Louisville as they call it. The merger with the city kind of ruined this county. What was left of the rural areas are, are disappearing. I think I got that tight enough now. Okay, here he is. I'm going to go ahead and snap my fitting on. Man, I hope this seals. If it doesn't, that's really going to be annoying to me because that means i got to drain it again. I don't want to. And this is my return line. Remember, this is the feed line with the big 10 in. Steel braided line that I told you about in my past videos. Let's see. I need a screwdriver right here. And these are some really good, these black clamps, they're stainless steel, supposedly, but they are very stiff, made of good hard stuff. Mm -hmm. They don't strip out very easy, like the cheap ones you buy now. It's hard to find good clamps anymore. I found these on eBay. Unfortunately, uh, the guy doesn't list any more of them. I wish I'd have bought all sizes. I needed these back when I was putting the cleaning the fuel system out on a power stroke and replacing all the lines and stuff. If you remember that video, for those of you who have watched my power stroke videos, but anyway, I bought all these off eBay. I bought a bag. I have some left. But these are the only size I have. And I wish I'd have bought every size he had available. Because you just can't find clamps like these. You can really crank them down tight and not worry about them stripping. You really have to try. Okay, I'm going to put some gas. Okay, we can put all the fuel I have in it, which is about seven or eight gallons. And it is bone dry which then that makes me very happy okay and we have the key on and I'm getting ready to sneeze too so excuse me for that and we're reading <coughs> oh excuse me oh, I hate sneezing and we're reading right at a quarter tank I feel like it should be a little higher but we did add that seven or eight gallons I'm, I'm not exactly sure how much to a, a bone dry tank, meaning uh, before I drained it this morning, it, it had been drained by the actual drain plug. So, and I think this is a 20 gallon tank on this car. So, so at least it's working a lot more. If it isn't accurate, com perfectly accurate, it's a lot more accurate than it was. So, I'm gonna fire this thing up, make sure my speedometer is working. I was. I haven't gotten to try out the Speedo that came with this actual cluster. I want to make sure everything's out of my way. I do have a charger on it. This battery's been sitting for a long, long... This is a tough battery, though, but it's been sitting for a lot longer than I would like to let it. And plus, I've been using a lot without it running, uh, checking my lights and stuff like that. We're at 81%. I guess before I start it, I should actually um, unhook it. They recommend that you don't start one up with the charger hooked up, so I won't do it. I have done it before, and um, I'm, I'm unplugging the charger in case you're wondering why I set the camera down. But um, let's see. Let's get her fired up, and hopefully, and there shouldn't be any leaks. Uh, all I did was take off that return line, so make sure we're drawing gas. It may take it a little bit to pick up. There we go. Sometimes you gotta kick it off. There we go. Started yet this morning, so it'll be a little cold. Of course, the gauge moving around when I started it there. I'm not sure what's causing that. You know.
know I might be causing that. Something I didn't think about. My return lines is going into the original feed line, which is right there where the float is. And okay, now we're getting closer to uh, the, the reading I thought. And uh, yeah, that turbulence could uh, give me a funny reading. You know, I didn't think about that. Something I probably have to live with. Okay. Okay, we almost half a tank. Old engine holds good oil pressure, which is cold, but it still does anyway. But yeah, we got almost half a tank. That is cool. I don't know if you can see my dash lights or not. Those you can, these you can't. They're still not as bright as I want them to be. Um, maybe you can't get them that bright, but if you can see inside of there, they are lighting up. And on a dark night, they will work about like an older car it usually works, I guess. Oh yeah, I don't have them turn, have, don't have them adjust them to full brightness either. But. See, they all do that. And my lights are wired to the, uh, Fuel pressure gauge and the tack, which goes in the blank hole in the dash pad, which I don't have on here right now. It looks a little on the dim side for some reason. Maybe it's all way like that. I don't know. But it is what it is. At least we got a fuel gauge that works now. We uh, we're gonna have some trunk room. And over throughout the course of the spring, we're going to round up a spare tire, put it in this thing. Okay, let's see. My speedo works. Cross your fingers. Yep, that looks about right. We're in first gear. Second. Third. Going 50 miles per hour and... Whoops! 2200. It says 279 gears in it. It don't have a race gear in it no more. I may put one back in it. Put that in neutral. I didn't even look at the odometer. Good deal, though. That's that makes me happy. After all that wrestling around with that fuel gauge, I was getting annoyed with that. And we're going to double check for leaks. Got some condensation out of that pipe. That's normal. And looks like I'm finally going to get to drive this thing today. I'll do a video of driving it later. I think I'm going to call this a video. See what I have left now is I need to put my dash pad on it. I need to find a clip that I'm missing. The passenger side uh, air vent, which is right there. I'm missing the clip. It was on there when I took it apart, but I lost it during disassembly. I'm hoping when I get this on the ground. I can pull this out and it will reveal itself. It's probably on the ground underneath the piece of insulation I was laying on or something. But anyway, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.